It's one of the Buddhist teachings that we don't like to hear, which is that it's through persistent effort that we put in into suffering and stress. We don't like to hear it because we think persistent effort means it has to be a drudgery, a chore. That's not necessarily the case. The Buddha talks about bringing joy to the practice, finding happiness, finding rapture and pleasure and ease in the practice. And so what kind of effort involves joy? We can think of some activity, a game, a sport, a skill, that has captured your imagination. And you find yourself working at it, not because anybody's forcing you, it's because you enjoy doing it. That's the kind of effort, the kind of attitude the Buddha recommends that you bring to the practice. John Fuang used to say that you want to play with the meditation. Don't be grim about it. Now, playing here doesn't mean that you just fool around. And so you play a sport, play a game that you find particularly interesting, something you want to master, something you want to win at. And so as you sit here focusing on the breath, ask yourself, where is the sport? Where is the game? Where is the enjoyment? And part of it lies in exploring the breath and seeing what you can learn about the breath. You've got this breath element in the body. If that concept is foreign to you, you might want to look at how you experience the in and out breath. We know that when you breathe in, air comes in the nose and goes into the lungs, and then it comes out from the lungs and goes back out the nose. But is that all there is to the breathing? What else is going on in the body? How are the muscles of the rib cage involved? How are the muscles of your abdomen involved? Even more subtly, how about your neck? How about your shoulders? How about your jaw? How about your legs and arms? To what extent are they involved in the breathing process? And as you're learning about the breath, you're also beginning to learn about your mind. Noticing how it picks up an object, stays with it for, for a while, gets bored and wants to find something else. And what can you do to bring it back, keep it interested? How can this capture your imagination, this skill of learning how to stay with the breath, regardless of whatever obstacle comes up, whether it's pain or boredom or whatever? How do you stick with it? It's very similar to an act of the imagination. This is where the game aspect comes in. There's really one time about how they've done a study how people use their imagination, and there are basically four things that you're doing. One is that you create your imaginary world. And if, if you know anything about the Buddhist teachings on becoming, you're beginning to realize that this is immediately relevant to the state of mind that we're creating with as we breathe in and breathe out and try to develop concentration. You're creating something, and then you want to hold it in mind. And then as you hold it in mind, you want to try changing it here, changing it there. And then gauging the results of what happens when you change it. So there are four processes, the creating, the holding, the changing, and then the evaluating. It's like deciding you're going to tell a story. You get that world of the story in your mind. Try to bring it into being, imagine it, and then hold it there in your imagination. Look at the characters. Look at the situation. And then ask yourself, what if the characters did this, and what if the characters did that? And then you evaluate. Would that be a good story? And if you don't like it, then you go back and you make other changes and keep working at this. It's very similar to the process the Buddha talked about in, many, in terms of the four bases of success. 
starts out with the desire to do something. That's the element of letting something capture your imagination, and then you stick with it. That's the creating and the holding. And then you examine it. Make some changes, and then you evaluate the changes. So the desire, the persistence, and the holding. Careful attention, and then the evaluation. These are all important aspects of the concentration. So you are creating a world of the mind here. And is in any story. If you're having, say, if it's a story about a magical universe, you don't want something really incongruous coming in. Unless that's the kind of story you want to tell. But that's not the kind of story we're telling here. We're trying to tell a story of the body here in the present, with the mind alert, watching what's going on. And working with the breath, exploring the world of the breath here in the body. So think of the breath and then hold it in mind. Pay careful attention to what you've got here and then try changing it and see what happens. Make the breath longer, make it shorter. Think of it coming in and out the back of your neck, in and out the base of your spine, running down your legs. If breath energy going down the body seems to drain your energy, think of it coming up. If breath energy coming up your body seems to make you tense, there's something that Hakuin, the Zen master, once called Zen sickness, which comes from basically letting the breath energy come up too much. Things begin to get stuck in your head. The energy doesn't have any way of releasing itself and going back down. So play with it and see what works, see what becomes interesting, see what becomes a good place to stay. So it's not the case that when you're meditating you don't use your imagination at all. You have to actually have to use it very actively. You are creating a world in the mind, a state of mind that is not solely in the mind, it's also in the body. Because you may have noticed that when you're thinking about various things, there's going to be a tension or a pattern of tension someplace in the body. So any act of the imagination, any act of the mind will have an aspect of the body. So if you don't occupy the body fully, other worlds are going to come in and invade. So you've got to fully occupy your body to make sure that this world that you're creating here doesn't get destroyed, doesn't get undermined. So you're exploring the world of the body here in the present moment. You're exploring the world of the mind here in the present moment as it's aware of the body, alert to what's going on and involved in this process of trying to maintain this state of concentration. And if it seems wobbly or unstable or not yet comfortable, what can you do to change it? And then evaluating the changes you've tried. See if they work, see if they don't. If they don't work, we'll try to imagine a different way of changing things. You may have noticed when reading John Lee's instructions for meditation, especially look at his Dharma talks, in keeping the breath in mind, he gives you some basic principles, but in his Dharma talks he plays with all kinds of other ideas of ways of playing with the breath, ways of conceiving the breath energy in the body, breath energy that spins around in place, breath energy that moves from one part of the body back and forth. Breath energy just stays still, or levels of the breath energy, the breath coming in and out through the lungs, the energy that courses through your blood vessels as the blood runs through them the energy that courses through your nerves, or the still breath energy that can be contacted at some of the some of the chakras, say the one in the middle of the chest. There's lots of things to explore here, lots of things to play with. So even though it involves effort, try to make it an enjoyable effort. See what aspects of the breath energy capture imagination, what aspects of keeping the mind still and at ease in the present moment capture imagination. Some people might call this escapism, that you're creating something in the mind, but the path is a creation, it's a fabrication. Sometimes you hear the idea that when the mind is just practicing mindfulness, just being Practicing bare awareness, just letting things arise and pass away without commenting, without trying to change them at all, that somehow that's not a fabrication. Well, the intention to keep that level of awareness going, that is a fabrication. 
It is experimenting with the present moment, putting an input into what's going on in the present moment. And if you don't admit that, if you don't realize that, that closes off the, any openings for insight to arise. Because a large part of the insight is your present participation in creating the present moment. You want to see that participation. If you don't see that, you, there's no chance for insight to, to come about at all. What are you doing to the present moment? How do you create your awareness of the present moment? What, you can, what can you do to do it more skillfully, and how many levels of refinement can you find in that participation? This is where insight arises. So it's best to be conscious at the very beginning that you are playing around. It's something that, as the mind gets more and more still, you can see the processes more clearly. So it's not just any kind of playing around, it's just any kind of escapism. It's a very clear and focused, purposeful way of playing with the present moment, so you can understand all these processes more clearly. So it is a game. But it's a game that you play in earnest. And the best way to do it well is to allow it to capture your imagination. What's going on here? What is this awareness in the present moment? When they talk about the mind going here, going there, does it really go? What goes? What stays? And if there's a lapse in mindfulness, which part of the mind is aware of the lapse and which part is not? To what extent is the mind lying to itself when it slips off from one train of thought to another? You think you're on one train, and all of a sudden you find yourself in another. What happened? Where did you make the jump, and how did you disguise that fact from yourself? These are really interesting things to explore. And the best way to explore them is to play with them, like picking up a basketball and learning how to shoot with it and finding that you enjoy it. And you find that there are difficulties, that you want to practice your skills, so you practice and practice and practice. Not because anybody's forcing you, but you find that it's really interesting. And as you play with the mind in this way, you learn an awful lot. A lot of serious issues get resolved. So to try to bring this attitude of play to the the effort that's involved in putting an end to suffering and stress, trying to bring this attitude of joy. Allow it to capture your imagination. So that you're giving it your wholehearted participa participation. It's this wholeheartedness, whole-mindedness. That's what allows insight to arise.